Let's talk about this placer now, which is found here under this deformers menu. So let's load it. And uh, the initial idea for this deformer is really to have an ability to show live displacements in the viewport as opposed to uh, displacements made in the displacement channel of uh, material. So deformations will be seen in the viewport, not on the render. So it's really a live effect. Since this guy can be really used in uh, multiple ways, so for example you can uh, maybe create a displacement map in your sculpting application and simply load it on your object live through this displacement. But uh, we will focus on uh, what it can do as a part of a MoGraph. So let's actually create a MoGraph text like this and uh, we will type here displacer. I will align this guy into middle so it's uh, right in the center of our scene. Maybe I will change the font to say uh, maybe let's try this uh, cartoony type of font and let's also load the material for this guy. So let's try something simple like uh, maybe maybe gradient and uh, I will load some colors here, maybe maybe this one. And uh, on the other hand, uh, let's go with uh, this one. So something like this. We can even utilize this turbulence. It will create some sort of a randomness and apply it to our guy. Maybe I will just invert this. So I get uh, this color up front and uh, now I will subordinate this displacer as a child of mode text. So it's really like an any other deformer. You will see that it really shares uh, some settings with the shader effector. So you can load any shader to displace the geometry of uh, anything that it affects. So it can affect a parametric object, it can affect splines, it can affect polygon objects naturally. One important thing for you to understand is uh, if you want to displace something successfully, meaning with uh, lots of detail, you have to have that detail in the object you are displacing. So this mode text and uh, you can see currently it really doesn't have a lot of information, especially in this front faces. So if you will be displacing it here, this guy will really not have anything to work with. So let's subdivide these guys a little bit. In fact, uh, this part is uh, pretty solid, so we can leave it like that. Maybe just add uh, one subdivision like this, maybe even a bit more, so it has a denser geometry. And here under caps, I will enable this quad options and, uh, and turn on regular grid because I want to have uh, pretty much equal polygon sizes on this guy and uh, let's tune this down to let's say maybe even three this would be good enough. So now we basically gave these guys enough geometry so whatever we will load here under shading tab it will pretty much work since uh, the object is dense enough. So let's load a material here and uh, I will go with noise and uh, the effect is really obvious immediately. Let's uh, choose uh, maybe a different type of noise. So let's try with uh, maybe this uh, over and uh, maybe try this peso. And yes, this works uh, a little bit better. So. Here in the object tab, you can choose how the displacer will displace this uh, geometry according to this type. So currently it's set to intensity and uh, I'm sure that uh, once of you that watched volume 2 understand these settings and uh, currently it's uh, really thinking, it's really working from a central value of these guys. So it's really going uh, in 
negative direction, so to speak. So if you want to create displacements from original geometry outwards only, then you have to go with this intensity settings. I hope uh, that makes sense. And uh, I will increase this to maybe 20. Let's even go to 50. So you can clearly see the effect, how it displaced these letters. And uh, of course, it has a follow. So you can really have fun with this one. Let's try spherical. So now the effect will be constrained only to this uh, fall off. You can imagine that uh, you could do some really neat stuff with this. So for example, uh, letters are frozen or stuff like that. So multiple applications of this uh, displacer. Let me show you another example with the uh, displacer. And then we'll get rid of all this and uh, create a completely new scene from the scratch and uh, I believe that creating scenes from scratch can really help you as opposed to show you something with a half finished or prepared scene. So let's uh, create a simple spline and in fact uh, I think that I will rather convert one of these uh, plane objects and uh, select a edge here and simply do a edge to spline command. So it's much more simpler than uh, enabling snapping and stuff like that. So we can now utilize this guy and uh, and we even have enough subdivisions for what I'm about to show you. So let's sweep this spline and uh, I will create a circular profile and also I will create a sweep nerves, subordinate both guys, simply scale this down to maybe something like this and uh, Let's create an appropriate material and uh, once I create that material, I think that uh, many things will become a little bit more clear and uh, let's in fact uh, create that color in luminance channel. I'm not sure why cinema opens this uh, color picker outside of the recording area, but uh, that's how it is. So let's maybe try with uh, really violet color like this and uh, apply it to our sweep nerves. Now I will add a displacer to this spline so I will select it here in the object manager and while I'm holding my shift key down I will select this displacer and uh, now that displacer will become a child of this spline. So basically what I'm going for here is the some sort of electrical effect. So let's load a noise shader because I'm pretty sure there is a noise type here that is really suitable for this. And you can already see this guy deforming and uh, let's in fact increase the height of the deformation. Let's go with uh, something like this. And uh, here I will load that uh, electric noise so it's really appropriate and uh, let's have a look at the settings if you press play like this nothing will happen so it won't oscillate until i enter something here in this animation speed so i really want this to be really fast so let's try something with like uh, 20 even a bit faster maybe 50 that would be much better so also what i can notice that uh, this spline is oriented uh, in z direction so i would rather rotate it like this by 90 degrees so now it's really oriented as i want so if i press play there i have an electrical energy beam effect or something like that so for example you could do you could use this to create uh, radio waves or stuff like that. So really useful. Of course, you can add a fall off. So let's add maybe a cone fall off and uh, everything inside the cone you can even hide it. So you only see this line. Everything inside the cone will be deforming. So multiple applications of this uh, displacer. Very cool, very handy and very powerful.
all in all one very useful deformer with many practical applications so let's get rid of uh, all this and uh, i want to show you this spline wrap guy which you can find here and uh, this is actually a part of MoGraph so it came with the release uh, 9.6 if I remember correctly and uh, what it does it really deforms the object on the spline and will really offer you a lot of additional options to modify that object uh, to great extent so let's first create some uh, arbitrary spline so I can draw something from uh, top view I have a tablet so it's uh, really easy for me something like this and uh, let's just change this to natural and uh, I hope that uh, this will be good enough for our presentation and to fully utilize this guy you have to create some sort of object so let's also do this and uh, I will decrease the width so let's say maybe let's go even with uh, 30 this guy can be half so let's say 200 and uh, just one segment in the width so it uh, you really have to have some sort of uh, nice definition if you want to have proper deformations once we apply this guy to this spline so let's also create some sort of uh, material and uh, maybe we will use this uh, let's go with this yellow color just to break all gray we can see in the viewport so now this is our initial state and what is important that uh, I really want to stress out that whenever you can leave these objects to be parametric you will have a really greater versatility in your setup so just as with uh, any other deformer this guy has to be a child of whatever it will deform so to see it in action you also have to load a spline to which this object will then wrap so let's load the spline and explain some settings and you will see that uh, our guy really deformed uh, in a really bad way so first thing you want to do is to find the appropriate axis for this guy so i believe this is z plus and uh, yes it is so our object now is currently stretched on this complete spline and i don't want that you have this two modes and uh, if you fit it to a spline then it will assume the length of the spline so this can be an effect you are going for but not in this case so we'll change this to keep length so it will keep the length of my original object i will also enable this uh, for our shading lines it will be easier a bit to see what's going on and this settings here this offset for example it's really similar to the offset found on uh, cloner and uh, some effectors this from and to you simply define from uh, which point on the spline this object will stretch or compress so you can clearly see this in action and uh, currently you can see if i play with this offset a bit so let's go to the end of this spline you'll notice it really extends the object outside the spline so you can really change that so let me show you a different behavior by enabling this clamp mode and it will clamp that object within the spline so if i hit 100 percent the object will reach that end point and then scale downwards okay so that's a different behavior we have a lots of uh, other options here which we will cover soon and uh, what i really wanted to show you is how this guy works with a cloner and uh, in that case if you want to clone this guy and you add cloner now so let's add a cloner now and i will show you the problem it will also clone this spline rep guy so it really won't work you cannot see those uh, clones to use this one effectively have to create a group so group this all under a null and then you have to put this deformer outside but 
if you drop a cloner here, clone that guy like this and put the deformer, and this works with every single deformer, put the deformer on the same hierarchy level as this cloner guy or any other generator found here. Watch the result. So it really works. This is a really important concept for you to understand and most of the people are really not aware that uh, this is possible. So let's have uh, fun with some settings here. For example, we could add uh, maybe 10 clones. Okay, so like this and uh, yeah, we'll scale this down. In fact, I'm really using the position value, but I'm simply lowering the gap between the clones and uh, here under spline wrap you have additional options to map the deformation of the object assigned to this spline via this uh, slider. So let's load uh, maybe a sine wave spline and uh, you will see I have a really interesting effect here. So it's uh, like sort of a abstract fish and uh, I will flip this and the uh, fish will look in the other direction. I can play with this uh, value here. So you clearly see that I'm mapping these guys according to this uh, point. So their size is being influenced. The same goes for the rotation here. So you can effectively bank anything on the spline and really utilize some crazy effects here. So very, very versatile. The last setting here is uh, really to use an app vector as a helper tool to keep certain spline constellations uh, really to be oriented properly. So now we have uh, really a little abstract fish. So let's uh, have a go with our fish and that looks really nice. So so you could maybe expand this by adding a formal effect or just on uh, this portion of your object and effectively have really nice fish or you could you could even create a really a proper polygon mesh uh, you would deform on this plane so multiple applications let me delete all this and uh, that's about it as far as the displacer and the spline wrap are concerned and we will talk now about uh, one of my most favorite tools in MoGraph and that is this Mo spline and it is absolutely incredible as uh, you will see but uh, there are certain parts in the Mo spline because this is really a huge system which can be a little bit intimidating and especially when we will talk about L systems uh, that can be a little bit scary for folks that are not really technically oriented but uh, it's really interesting and uh, I will show you a few examples of this mouse spline. Also, you'll notice that I didn't cover this sound effector and the reason for it is uh, because I'm going to show you the usage of it in uh, one of the mini projects. So we will now talk about mouse spline and then we can continue with our mini projects which are a lot of fun. Let's go to our next lesson.